In this demonstration, we'll see how to define bodies in Simscape Multibody. We are building a model of a scissor lift. The scissor lift has many parts in it. We want to make sure we can easily reuse these parts in other parts of our design process to speed things up. We're going to assemble standard solids together and use MATLAB to define custom parts. We're going to start with a simple model of our system and then refine it to look more like the real system. To define the base piece, we'll assemble three parameterized solids in the block diagram. We'll define the interface frames graphically. To create the link, we'll define a 2D profile in MATLAB and stretch it to create an extrusion. Here, we'll create the interface frames using the block diagram. I'll now switch over to the model so you can see how this is done. We'll use the command smnew to open a new Simulink model with the settings appropriate for Simscape Multibody. The first thing that we need to do is to define the base block. The base block is a cube that's 16 centimeters on a side, so we'll set the dimensions here, including the units. If I press F5, the visualization gets updated. To make it easier to define the frames, I'm going to adjust the view convention to have Y up in the front. We'll change the color of our cube using this RGB vector, so we'll set it to be 0, 0 0.6, 0 0.8 and we press F5 and the color gets updated. Now we need to define the interface frames. We need an interface frame on the bottom for the connection to the cart and at the center for the pivot for the link. We already have a frame at the center for the pivot to the link, we just need to define one on the bottom. We'll click this plus to enter the frame definition tool. We'll rotate and select the frame on the surface on the bottom and this will be our connection to the world. So now we have the frame that we need at the bottom. If I turn the frames on, we see we have the two frames that we need. We go back to the block diagram. We see a port has been added for the frame we just created. If I update diagram, we will see the cube that we've just defined. I'm going to change the view con convention to be the same as what we saw before and adjust the background to be white. The next thing that we need is the solid to define the link. So I'll create a new line, add a solid block, now we'll define this link. This link has different dimensions, so we'll make it 2.4 meters long by 15 centimeters by 4 centimeters. We'll also change the color to be a little bit lighter, so we'll make it 0 0.9 as a vector so you can enter MATLAB expressions. If we update the diagram, we see that our second part has been added, but the two parts are rigidly connected at the center. We need an interface frame on this part at this end. We'll use the rigid transform block to add that frame. We'll add the frame on the x-axis at 1.2 meters, so half the length of our link. When I update the diagram now, we see that these two parts are connected at their interface frames, the center of the, blo uh, center of the block and the end of this link. If I run the simulation, nothing happens. That's because these two parts are rigidly connected by this line. We need to add a degree of freedom. So if we add a revolute joint and connect it here, these two parts can rotate with respect to one another. If I run the simulation now, still nothing happens. That's because gravity is acting along the minus z axis. If I go into the, the mechanism configuration block, I can see the gravity vector is on minus z. So we will adjust it so that it is on minus y, Rerun the simulation, and we can see that it swings like a pendulum. This is what we were hoping for. This is our very simple model of our, of our two parts. We'd like to make this a little bit more interesting and more realistic. So first, we'll adjust the base block. The base block needs to be composed of three parts. I'm going to pack those into a subsystem. So inside this subsystem is the part that we were just working with. We need to have a brick, a pin, and another brick. And those two bricks are going to be half the, less than half the width of the original one. So we'll make this narrower by adjusting the dimensions. Here you can see we've made it narrower. Now the interface frames also need to change. We have one on the bottom, but we need one on the side. So I'm going to go into the frames portion of the dialog box, and I'm going to add an interface frame. The interface frame that I want is on this side. So we'll select that feature and this is going to be the interface to the pin. We no longer need the interface frame at the center of our part, so I'll deactivate this. If I hit F5 and show it like this with the frames, we can see we have the ones that we need. We have the one at the bottom and we have the one for the pin. 
We're going to need two of these blocks, one for each side, so I'll make a copy of this, but then I need to adjust the interface frames for this one. Our interface frames are in world, we don't need that one anymore, and we need to reset, we need to reset the, uh, adjust the location of the frame for the interface for the pin. We're going to put it on the upper surface. So I'll select this feature, and now we have our two blocks for this, uh, for our new base. If I update the diagram now, we see we have inside our subsystem, we have the first solid we defined and the second solid, and they are both connected along that face. Now we need to insert the pin. So we'll go back here, delete these connections, we'll make a copy of this block, and it's in this block that we're going to add the interface, that we're going to create the pin. I'm going to delete these two frames because we won't need them in the new cylinder that we're going to create. The cylinder has a diameter of 0 0.5 me uh, 5 centimeters and a length of 6 centimeters. So when we update the diagram, we see we have our pin. Now I need to add the frames. We need one at each end of the pin. So I will click here, select that surface, and add one frame. This will be the left side of the pin. And I need another one on the bottom. So I will rotate and select the bottom of this, select that feature, and this will be the, right, the frame on the right side of the pin. We're going to need the sent the frame at the center in order to attach it to the in order to attach it to the link. So we have the three interface frames that we need. So now I can connect these parts together. So left, right, and then the pin connects to our link. And now when I update the diagram, we see that we have our base block is now complete. If I make this, if I hide this block, we can see we have our block and the pin. Now we just need to update the link and make it look more realistic. So right now we have simply a brick. We have the option of creating a general extrusion where we would simply define a profile, a 2D profile in MATLAB and stretch that along a certain axis. I have created a MATLAB function that creates the profile for a link. So this will plot the link that we want to create. You can see it has three holes just like we need for our scissor lift mechanism. So I'll simply copy this code or this MATLAB function and place it in the cross section portion of our user interface. This is all in, def in units of centimeters, and we need to make the length uh, or the depth of this 4 centimeters, so we'll set that to 0 0.04. If I press F5, you can see that our link has now been defined and it has our three holes. If I come back to the diagram and hit Update Diagram, we see we now have a more realistic looking link. If I expand to full view and run the simulation, you can see we now have our customized link part, which has been defined using the MATLAB extrusion data. In this demonstration, we have seen how to define bodies in Simscape Multibody.